Hey, it's Phil Bedford here, the Rebel Network, and welcome to this week's show. And today, welcome back to Kate Sweetman. Kate, welcome back. I'm thrilled. Second time here. I'm excited. And we're in a different venue today. We're in the uh, Capital Club in Dubai. Yeah. And I heard, you, I heard you've had some good news recently. Uh, I, I actually have had some good news recently. I was very honored to discover that I am in the a Thinker's 50 designation again. So just tell, for the people who don't know what that is, what is the Thinker's 50? Um, the Thinker's 50 is something that comes out of London, actually, and there, there's a process through which the organizers uh, vote on who they think are influential thinkers in the world, particularly in the business world. That's incredible. Yeah, so I'm really thrilled. That's awesome. Yeah, thank you. So can I, can I challenge you on some thinking? Please do. Okay, so uh, I think one of the most powerful ways of increasing the quality of your life, whether it's in business or socially or with family, is our ability to mix with other p individuals, other human beings, Absolutely. to build relationships. Absolutely. Uh, and then obviously this shows up a lot in the business world. Um, however, this is often termed as networking. Now, the minute I say that, some people are <laughs> going to start going, oh, no, not networking. Not that again. Hate that word. Hate that word. Tell us something about that. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I know that. I know that I used to think of it as a very self-serving term, that networking is you you know, heading out into the world and trying to find people you could take advantage of. And I've come to change my thinking about that very much because what I've come to realize is that human beings are social creatures, mm -hmm. right? We live in relationship. Every, everyone lives in relationship. And so we're... we're we're not being realistic and we're not mm. actually serving our needs mm. if we think we can somehow go it alone. Mm. Yeah. So um, do you have any examples for where, where maybe this has showed up in your career, the ability to build relationships and get somewhere? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, when I look back, we had a little talk about this before you mm. and I over lunch. And when I look back at my career and I think of, you know, when have I had, you know, major changes take place or when have I gotten really good help or when, have, or when has a really good opportunity come to me? like being an editor at HBR or getting the opportunity to write a book or becoming a, a coach and mentor at the Legatum Center at MIT. It all happened through somebody in my network, and I use that word with love, mm. <laughs> um, noticing that I had a skill or understanding that I had a desire and you know helping me to use that. So when you look at it that way, it's really just people helping people. Mm. And, and I, I don't think we should shy away from it. Mm. Now, I yeah. think, um, again, talking about the reality of this, yeah. um, I'm sure there's people listening to this show, and I certainly know there's people out there that I've bumped into, where they're like, yeah, yeah, this relationship, you know, building, networking thing, yeah, yeah, I get it, I know it's powerful, and if ever I need it, I'll just make it happen. Yeah, yeah, and those people are, are, are wrong. <laughs> they're wrong because, you know, years and years ago when I was an editor at Harvard Business Review and I was working on a piece and I came across this quote by Elizabeth Dole and she used to be the president of the American Red Cross, you know, which deals with disasters all the time when things really go wrong and they happen quickly. And we do live in this age of disruption, disturbance, reinvention. So guess what? Things are going to happen fast. Anyway, she had this, um, she said something that I thought was incredibly wise. And what she said was, when she first became president of the American Red Cross, which deals with floods and mm. famines and disasters and earthquakes mm. and hurricanes, she said the first thing she did was make a list of everyone she thought she might ever need to talk to at three o'clock in the morning mm. to deal with a disaster and got to know them. Mm. Because she wanted to be able to call them and not have it be a transaction. Mm. Like, I suddenly need you to do something for mm. me. But have a very relationship where she'd actually help them with something and they'd help her with something. And just as in a family or in your neighborhood or your sports club or your university, you know, just all those people that you love being in contact with, mm. it's actually the same thing. You just happen to be in a business context. Hmm. Yeah. I think that's incredible. I mean, um, I know for a fact the American community in Dubai is actually quite strong. Yeah. And one of the things that's always impressed me is when one of them's ill, all of a sudden the community are turning up one day at a time with a meal cooked. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. And I just think that's, that's such an amazing example of how you invest in relationships. And you don't even know if it'll ever be passed back. But I'll tell you what, if ever you it's need true. it... It's true. It's true. And, comes. you know, that doesn't surprise me at all because that's actually mm. a very typical thing. In mm. fact... <clears throat> There used to be an organization, I assume it's still around, I haven't moved in a long time, called the Welcome Wagon. It, that is actually a pretty typical way uh, that Americans oftentimes deal with each other. That when somebody's new to the neighborhood, you really do make a reach out mm. and, and invite them over. Um, 
so that doesn't surprise me. And I mean, just recently, a friend of mine's husband, mother, passed away. And so we went over and left some food on the front porch. Never even heard back, but that's okay. That's okay. Because you don't expect that. They're in, they're in crisis. And yeah. so that's what you do. I think that's what I loved about your Red Cross story. You know, um, if she'd have been there and suddenly there was an emergency, you don't go and Google. <laughs> right. You know, it's an emergency. It's just that's like you right. don't pick it up and you need action. That's right. You know, so I mean, I think on so many levels, it's just a brilliant yeah. story. Well, I think know? we also should assume, I, I believe that most people actually do want to be helpful. Uh -huh. And I believe that most people do want to see the people around them succeed. And so when I think back on my career, as I said, I'm, I'm actually amazed at how helpful people have been to me. Mm. But I think I've also been helpful to people. Mm. But it's definitely a pay it forward kind of thing. It's not a one-on-one -on -one transaction oriented uh, relationship. It's more that you're putting energy into the network and the network's mm. giving you energy back. And that's why I think it's a real mistake to say, oh, the next time I need a job, I'll suddenly start dialing, <laughs> you know? You gotta do it in advance. Yeah. Brilliant, Kate. Thank you so much for the My show. pleasure. Really lovely to see you again. My pleasure. Lovely to see you. I'll see you soon, I'm sure. I hope so. <laughs> Rebel Networker.